Hello everyone, welcome to the week three of machine learning exercises. This week we will be working on linear regression, as you already implemented last week, and we will be studying key concepts in machine learning, such as model complexity, overfitting, and regularization. As you might already know, you can download the exercise content on the GitHub page of the machine learning course. You just need to follow this link, go to this link, and check the folder labs and exercise three. There you will find one Jupyter notebook and other different Python files that we provide you for your convenience. Now let's check briefly the content of the exercise session. At the first part, you will implement and debug the squares algorithm. As you might remember last week, you implemented different algorithms to calculate the parameters for the linear regression model. For example, you implemented grid search, gradient descent, or stochastic gradient descent. This week, you will be implementing least squares algorithm. Different from the other algorithms you already implemented, least squares algorithm actually finds the optimal parameters for the linear regression model. And you will be solving least squares problem using something called normal equations, as described in the lecture content. On the second part, you will implement debug and visualize basis function models. As you might already know, linear regression is not a very powerful model. To increase its capacity, we will be using polynomial basis functions. You will see as you apply the polynomial basis functions, you will start fitting to nonlinear data that you wouldn't be able to fit previously. So it will increase your uh, model capacity. On the third part, you will start understanding and thinking about overfitting. As you increase the capacity of your model, then there is the risk of overfitting. Overfitting happens when your model is so powerful, it starts fitting the noise in the training data. So when some model overfits, it actually performs very poorly on the test data, and which means it's not a very useful model. We should pre prevent overfitting in general. On the last part, you will implement rigid regression. Rigid regression is essentially a regularized version of linear regression. Once you implement rigid regression, you will see that it's actually more resilient to overfitting when compared to the linear regression. As also as a reminder, we have a new data set introduced in this exercise session, which is called X Data Exercise 3 CSV, which is located here. We also provide you with the helper functions so that you can load the data without any, without any code. Uh, you don't need to write any code to load the data of data exercise three, which is located here. Now let's start looking closely at each part of the exercise and see in particular how we are going to implement it. For the first part, you will start implementing least squares algorithm. And in particular, you need to fill this function, which is called least squares, which is also located here in the Jupyter notebook. As you can see, this, this function takes two parameters, y and x parameters, which are the target and input variables. And your implementation should return two things. The first, the optimal weights, which you will calculate using normal equations. And the second, it should return the mean squared error. You already implemented the mean squared error function in your last exercise session, so you can just copy and paste here. Once you implement the least squares algorithm, then you will test your least squares implementation. As you can see, we already provide you for the data loading code, so you don't need to write any code for loading or pre-processing the data. Once you implement the least squares algorithm here, you will just call this here by giving it valid parameters y and x, and it should return you the optimal weights and the mean squared error. What, you, what we want you to do here is to combine all your, for example, three different implementations, grid search, gradient descent, and least squares, and make sure they give similar outputs. If they don't, we know at least in one of them you made a mistake. So in general, this paradigm of having one easy to implement algorithm, such as grid search, and other more complicated algorithm, like least squares, and making sure their outputs are similar, it's actually a very nice way of debugging machine learning algorithms and in, done commonly in the practice. And again, you should, uh, you should check the output of your three different algorithm and make sure they are giving similar outputs. If not, then we are sure you made a mistake in at least one of, the, one of your algorithms. Once you've done this, now we will start with linear basis function models. <clears throat> 
if you don't remember what linear basis function model do is replace each row of the input data matrix with the polynomial basis function. For example, this can be your input data matrix where it has n rows and just a single column. And the linear basis function will uh, replace each row with the, this function in particular. And this is called polynomial basis function. For example, it, it will replace each xn with one which is the xn to the power zero, xn, which is xn to the power one, xn square, xn cube, up into the xn to the degree. So your output data matrix will have the same number of rows, uh, but, but will have, it will be wider, it will have more columns. You will implement the polynomial expansion function here. Again, it will take uh, one data matrix and it will take a degree parameter which we'll use while we are calculating the polynomials of the original futures. Again, it should, this function should return a matrix which has, has the same height, same number of rows x, of x, as x, but it should have more columns, it should be wider. Once we implement this, then we will test our uh, polynomial basis function implementation. Then once you implement the build poly, you should just come here. And as you can see, we already loaded the data for you, X and Y values. You don't, you don't need to write any code for loading the data. And what, because the data is lo loaded, you should just expand this data using the polynomial regression, the polynomial function that you wrote, and you should return here the expanded versions of the uh, data matrices. Once you've done this, you should uh, use the least squares implementation that you just did in this exercise and calculate the root mean squared error and optimal weights. As a side note, root squared mean error can be calculated like this. It's just the two times square root of two times mean squared error. We are using root mean squared error because it is more intuitive. It has more intuitive values. For example, in mean squared error, you have squares in your implementation. So it is units are not in the same, same units. Uh, the scale is not in the same units as in the input data. But root mean squared is, has square root at the end. So it's, its values are easier to implement, easier to interpret. Once you return the mean squared error here, uh, this polynomial regression function will print the training errors for different, different degrees. And for example, you can see degrees are already given here. You will use this for different degrees. And at the end of this exercise, what, will you, what you, will, you are going to see is when we increase the degrees, you will see smaller and smaller training errors because we are increasing the model complexity. And one important thing to mention is you should move, once you implemented this build poly function, you should move this implementation into the, this build polynomial Python file here. Because our visualization library is going to use this implementation instead of your implementation on the notebook. So please don't forget this. Once you've done this, then we can switch to the next part of the exercise. On the next part of the exercise, uh, as I mentioned to you in the previous part of the exercise, once you increase the degrees, uh, you actually get smaller and smaller training errors. But in practice, what we carry is not the training error, but the tester that we want our model to generalize to unseen examples. Otherwise, it's not a very useful model. To simulate this experience of having training and test data, you will literally split your input, input data into two parts using this split data function and it will take three parameters, X and Y values, input and target values, and one ratio parameter which determines which percentage of the data will go into the training split and the reminder of the data will go into the text, test, test split. So this function in particular should return four values, X train, X test, Y train, and Y test. Once you've done this, then you should come here to have a look at the train test split demo. As I already mentioned, we already loaded the data for you. So you should just go here and split the data X and Y values into four, four different values, as I mentioned. Then you should augment your input data, X train and X test, using the polynomial basis function you just implemented. Just make sure you are doing the same augmentation on both input uh, train and test data. And once you have done this 
split and the augmented data with polynomial basis function, you should calculate the weights, optimal weights with least squares method you implemented in this exercise. And then you should just return the root mean squared error for training and testing splits. So what you will see when you run this code, if you look at the script, you can see we already wrote some degrees and split ratios to, to run this test with. Once you run this part of the code, you will see, you can clearly see phenomena of overfitting. For example, if you have very high degrees and you have very small split ratio, you will see training error is actually very small. But on the other hand, on the test set, you will have very large error. So you will see this model is actually not a very useful model. And in general, once you run the cell, you want you to have a look at the values, training and test values, and try to have a good understanding why these values occur. For example, you, you should have, you try to understand which split is better for which degree, and you should be able to explain it very well. You should refer to the lecture notes if this is unclear. For example, you should see overfitting, and you should understand why the test error, root mean squared error for degree 12 is very high for small amount of training data, like 10%. And we want you to think about, for example, what would you do if you have 5,000 samples instead of 50, where you have plenty of training data, essentially. Then how would you split in this situation? As you already saw overfitting, in the next part, we will try to understand how can we prevent overfitting. And one way to prevent overfitting is to use regularization. And regression is the regularized L2 regularized version of linear regression. And here, you, under this function, regression, you will implement uh, the regression model. It will be a very similar implementation of linear regression, but with one difference that it will take the lambda values as a parameter. Lambda value in regression determines the amount of regularization you do. For example, if it's zero, then it sh there should be no regularization. So essentially, your model should return the same output as, as with the linear regression model. So one way to debug of your regression model is to set the lambda to zero and make sure the outputs are the same with the linear regression. Once you implement the regression model, then you should come here. As you know, we already uh, prepared the data for you. So you should split the data, return train and test data. You do a polynomial basis function. So you will augment your data. And here, you should run your regression model with given lambda. Lambda is already given for you here. Once you run the cell, sorry, once you run the cell, then you will see such a plot. On the x axis of the plot, you will see different lambda values. On the y, you will see different error values. And this is, for example, this plot is for degree 7. This plot is particularly interesting because you can see in the lambda values, as I mentioned to you, if the lambda value is zero, essentially we are doing linear regression. So the le leftmost part of this plot is, is close to linear regression. You can see in this some lambda regime is actually tester, which is the red curve, is smaller, the error is smaller than the linear regression, which is the leftmost part of this plot. So you can argue looking at this plot, regression is actually more resilient to overfitting than linear regression. And in the last part, different from the last week exercise, we will have theory, some theory exercises. You don't need to implement any code here, but we want you to have some pen and paper and do some mathematical derivations. For example, in the first part, you need to prove that sum of two convex functions is also convex. And essentially, using the definition of convexity, you need to uh, prove this inequality. In the second part, for example, you need to understand when a linear system is solvable and when it's not possible. And you should have a closer look at the invertible matrices. On the third part, you will be dealing with the computational complexities of different algorithms you already implemented. For example, grid search, gradient descent, and stochastic gradient descent. On the last part, you will be working on a brand new loss function, cost function. In this cost function, you won't be just uh, calculating the difference between target and prediction values, but you will also take care of the magnitude of the target values.
So using this function, you will compute its gradient. And you will tell us how you can implement this gradient. And in general, Hassan's did this function to outliers. So this is essentially all for this week. So if you have any problems among these questions, you can always ask us essentially on Thursday on the campus or on Discord. So have fun. <laughs>